in the Big Ten play and uh, want to know what road wins too. So um, just happy about that. You know, a lot, a lot of things to get done tonight. Um, you know, we, we made it tough, that's for sure. And uh, it was a tough environment. First time we've been on the road. I thought the guys overall responded well, but we made it tough in that second second quarter. They outplayed us pre pretty much in every facet. So, um, you know, but I think that makes the win even that much more valuable. <coughs> and uh, makes me appreciate it a little bit. The guys did a great job at halftime. Coaches made some adjustments, but the real story was just the way our players responded and came out. We looked like a much better football team. Uh, just really proud of the offense. You know, we started with the ball and uh, got a chance to even the score back up and then, you know, continued to do a really good job the rest of the half. De defense uh, looked like what we're more accustomed to and uh, credit to Minnesota at the end of that first half. But just good to see those guys uh, really settle down and play you know, the way hopefully we're capable of playing. So. Happy about that. Obviously, Caleb, you know, great, great night again. Uh, he's really playing well for us. And anytime a back gets 200 yards, that's, that's pretty special. And defense coming up with two interceptions. And uh, I've always a positive and, you know, got a touchdown off of Jay's pick in the first half. Good team football there. Got good field position off one of those punts and got, uh, got a good uh, scoring drive out of that as well. So some good things there, but, uh, you know, just a lot of good things. Played clean, one penalty. It was costly, but uh, one penalty and uh, did a good job protecting the foot and the ball. So just uh, in short, you know, we're going to enjoy this one a little bit more than 24 hours, give you guys a little bit extra time uh, heading into a bye week. And uh, just, again, really, really proud of the guys. They just uh, was a great, great effort. Certainly have a lot of things to work on now between now and our next uh, next ball game. And we'll try to be smart about this uh, this coming week. You know, we want to get the guys rest a little bit. You know, we just uh, basically finished an eight-week stretch. Got another eight-week stretch uh, coming up, or six-week, I guess, to be specific. So be smart about that. But we still certainly have a lot of things to work on and improve. And that, uh, we'll, we'll go to work on that stuff here and, as we turn the turn the page. I guess I wanted to ask you just kind of about the way the offense, you know, through four games, the way you brought the football, it's back to kind of what you, I'm sure, wanted to see in your, the primary tenants of this program. Well, what's it like to now watch it continue to progress? I mean, this is a 200-yard game for, for Caleb Johnson, but also Jazz Patterson had a lot of yards, and, and it really imposed their will. Um, I guess what's it like for you to see the, the line progress like it is? Yeah, I mean, LeSean really hasn't been healthy yet this year. Uh, but the other three guys have really played well when they've been in there, and that's encouraging. And you know, we're going to need everybody as we go forward. Again, going back to the line, and I'll include the tight ends and the receivers are part of it too. That's all good. And just for the record, I'm all for balanced offense too. I'd really, I, and that's that's the next challenge. We were going to do a little bit better job uh, in the passing game, but we left some stuff out there tonight too, especially in that first half that could have helped. And, you know, it's a funny thing about football, like just little things, you could convert a couple plays that maybe we didn't, and then all things, you know, things start to roll a little bit, but boy, when you don't, it makes it tough, and, you know, we kind of experience that. Blake in the back. Uh, Coach, you know, Caleb Johnson's right now on a sort of traje trajectory to challenge some of the records that Sean Green, you know, ran for when he was here in 2008. I was curious to see any parallels between those two guys. And is Caleb getting to a brand new echelon in terms of the running back he's coached over his career here? I just got done telling the guys on the radio. I'm, I'm not sure I remember anybody in four games doing what he's done. Uh, he just continues to run really well. And uh, he's been really aggressive. You know, he's always been a big, strong guy and a talented guy. But right now he's really just focused and I think really coming into his own in terms of using what strengths and abilities he does have. And he's really using those uh, to his advantage. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a really impressive four games. And, you know, Sean Green did it, you know, whatever it was, 12 games, I think we were 12 game seasons back then. Uh, did it when it was 11, but he did it each and every week. And that, that's a challenge, you know, it's really, uh, it's easier to talk about that stuff than do it. Uh, but, you know, have every reason to think Caleb's just gonna keep getting better. And he's got a great attitude, so really, really happy for him. John. Um, don't have the numbers in front of me, but I think it's 222 yards allowed in the first half and then maybe 66 in the second half. What do you kind of see as the biggest reason for kind of such a drastic improvement there? Yeah, that felt like 450 yards in the first half. Because, um, you know, we just weren't putting up a fight there, and that, that's hard. And um, so, you know, I, I think we just kind of knuckled down a little bit, and then the other component was I think we had four straight scoring possessions. And, you know, we were chunking the ball. So, you know, time of possession can help if the offense can stay on the field. 
really makes it better for the defense. And these guys have done a good job of that, you know, for quite some time. So uh, that was a big part of it too. But you know, a big part of it's rhythm too. You know, I think if you're playing well on offense, then sometimes that carries over the defense, and then you know, vice versa as well. Chad, in your, in your experience, you know, a game like this where you just didn't look good at halftime, but then come back and win like this, it, what can that do for a team? From your experience. It, it's big. I mean, it's just like, you know, it's our first road game and you know, our first conference game. And those, those things are different, uh, especially the road part. So, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to win, you got you have to experience that. And, uh, it's something we talk about in camp too, part of the curriculum, if you will, is that like, you know, we're, we're going to be in these situations. Uh, it's just part of conference play. And, um, so, you know, the question is how you react and respond. And historically we've had some good reactions and we've had some that weren't so good. And, Hey, try to cite those in a little bit, and then you know, but it gets back just like I said, you know, at halftime, at some point, you just decide, okay, how are we gonna, you know, what are we gonna do here? How are we gonna shape this thing? And just uh, can't, can't be more pleased than you know, the way the guys responded. Um, what was the half? Oh, I'm sorry, okay. Okay. Go ahead. I'm not used to this. Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. Mike. Go ahead. Oh. It's a tough new world, I know. Oh. <laughs> um, halftime. Were you and your coaches emotional, or was it more a measured response? Yeah, I wouldn't call it emotional. Um, like I said, the staff did some things and talked about some things, and you know they're throwing a lot at us defensively. Um, so we just tried to minimize some of the things we were going to do and um, change a couple protections. You know, and unfortunately, we had about ten third and longs, like real longs, and those are tough to convert. And defensively, I don't think we made too many adjustments. They, they tweaked a couple things, but. Uh, and I'm, you know, no big new Rockney speech or anything like that, but it's just, you know, here's where we're at, and we got a choice to do something. We got the ball, so good way to start to be able to take it and score, and then we need to play out the full 30 minutes. So, I mean, it's, you know, it is kind of what it is, and the guys, you know, we have good, good, good leadership, and those guys responded, and they kind of led the way for everybody. Tom, I'll throw out a little bit of a special teams question for you. Uh, Reese had a really good day, especially the first half. How important was that for you guys? Yeah, I just talked to LeVar coming out and said, did he do anything wrong tonight? I mean, he you know, had one put LeVar one pleased with, totally. But, uh, yeah, I thought he did a great job. That was a huge component of the game. And, you know, this is only this is his first road game, his first conference game, his first fourth game uh, in American football. Uh, and he just seemed unfazed. And, and the wind went real, real bad out there, but it didn't seem to matter which way we were going. He just kept putting them down there. And they had a long field all night long, which was really big. And, helping us, although they still drove it twice. But, um, you know, typically they were starting on the inside the 25, which is really, really helpful. I thought he was really good. Take a couple more, Pat. Kirk, I know I'm probably showing my age and getting a little carried away here, but do you see a little bit of Eric Dickerson with Caleb Brown? Uh, yeah, I remember Eric Dickerson, Dickerson but I don't, I, like, I didn't study him. I don't know. Yeah, he, they were both tall. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> he looked like he was 6'4 when he played. Um, Kale, Kale, yeah, uh, I'm not gonna make any cracks about SMU. It, it would be too easy. <laughs> <laughs> Some I mean, SMU in that era. Not, not now, I'm not saying about him now, just for the record. But yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, pretty good player. I mean, he was good with the Rams, I remember that. Yeah. Scott. I, I would say Larry Johnson might have come up, but, um, <laughs> so, yeah. but uh, you know, it, it does, I would say that uh, it's not hyperbole to suggest that. It, the same thing that happened in the first half happened in the second half. You guys would be facing some sort of a crossroads, and especially going into a bye, and things could really spiral, spiral out of control the other way. Instead, the way you guys were able to put together that second half is you know, a response you guys have done over time quite a few times. But what does it mean to you just to be able to see your players' backs against the wall, a lot of things coming at them, and then respond the way they were? That's how you grow. You grow, and then preferably it was tonight, not the next time we're in that situation. But that's you know, failure is part of learning, and um, so you know, luckily we didn't have to touch the flame tonight. But uh, yeah, I threw up on or mentioned, I think Wednesday, I don't make a big deal of it, but there's you know, a hell of a difference between being three and one and two and two, hell of a difference in one and oh and oh and one in Big Ten play. And that was it. I mean, I kind of left it at there. But our guys are smart guys, they can figure that out. It doesn't mean it's like, you know, win or else, but, you know, it is. It's it really the essence of it each and every week, you know. Uh, we only get 12 opportunities. So I think if the guys are smart enough to know, it would have been a lot better going to a bio with a little momentum, feeling good and, you know, having a chance to smile a little bit instead of, you know, looking at a 
you know, just about the challenges in front of us. Last question, David. Yeah, I want to go back to Reese. I mean, it's safe to say he almost call it and say he had the weight of the world on his shoulders taking over for Tory. But for a guy being out of the country, do it he did, struggling last week. I mean, what you kind of response did you see from him throughout the course of the week? Was there something said to him? Was it business as usual for him? And is that sort of the Reese that you saw in you know fall camp, summer? Any yeah, of that he's too? been pretty good ever since he showed up. And, you know, we weren't working football with him, but uh, you know, just going back to the start of camp and he. Had, I think it was Tuesday, either maybe it was Monday. Anyway, had a, had a couple bad ones, you know, which is not like him. But then a couple plays later, or punts later, you know, he's nailing it again. So he typically practices really well. He's really steady. Probably doesn't have the proficiency or expertise that Tory had a year ago. But you know, you got a four-year gap there in, in that regard. But uh, I'm not going to be more pleased. And, and to me, the most pleasing thing is just watching his demeanor. He doesn't seem to get too rattled or affected. And uh, I kind of like this little, you know. Showed a muscle. We, there's a new thing on Big Ten enforcement on uh, taunting too, and you know I guess you can't. Guys are like shooting arrows and stuff, uh, so he didn't get, get a penalty for doing. But I, you know, I like this moxie. It was good. Yeah, he's got a good spirit too. Great. Thank you.